Jonathan Bedding is that if you take an image and you get you take a corrupted version of that image, or let's say a slightly transformed version of the image, different viewpoint, for example, the content of the image doesn't change. And so the embedding should be the same. So a joint embedding architecture is trained by, is basically a big neural net, and you train it in such a way that when you show it two versions of the same image, of the same thing, you produce the same embedding. You force it to produce the same embedding. Okay, the same output, essentially. And then the P, the predictive, is, let's say, a version of the image is, you know, a frame in a video, and the corrupted version is the frame before. So now what you need to do is predict the next frame from the previous frame, or predict the next few frames, so you produce few, few frames. And that's called a JEPA, so a joint embedding predictive architecture, right? You, you have two embeddings, one that takes the future of the video, one that takes the past, and then you have a predictor that tries to predict the representation of the future of the video from the representation of the past of that video. When you use this type of architecture to train a system to learn representations of images, it works really well. Um, there's a number of different techniques that my colleagues and I and many other people have come up with over the last few years to do this, and it works really well. So we can learn good representations of, of images. We're starting to get good representations of video, but it's very recent. But then what you can imagine is now that you have this principle that I was talking about for Jupiter, where, where you have data about Jupiter about, or Mercury, and then you ask the system, find a good representation of all the data you have, eliminating all the stuff you can't predict so that you can make predictions in representation space. So eliminate all the stuff you cannot predict, the weather on Jupiter, uh, you know, like all kinds of details that you really would not be able to predict and eliminate all that and just find a representation such that you can make predictions at a certain horizon within that space. And in my, in my opinion, that's really the essence of kind of understanding the world where, that you do when you do physics, right? You're trying to find a model of a phenomenon, eliminating all the stuff that is irrelevant, and then finding a good set of relevant variables that allows you to make predictions. That's really what science is all about.